Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to do a bit of cleanup and we're going to build our digital asset. Okay, so in the last video, we fixed up our grout and we added the tint color, but we left it on point attributes. Um, and as you can see, that's kind of nuked out the color on our bricks. So remember to change that over to primitives and we get our primitive attribute. We're currently working with primitive point, uh, primitive color rather than point color. So there we go. That's brought that back for us. Also, what we need to do is drop this into a group. So we've got some geometry group there called grout. All right. So let's do some cleanup before we um, create our digital asset. If we click on the little eye on our last merge node down here, you can see we've got a bunch of point attributes, a bunch of primitive attributes, and just stuff that we don't really need and point groups that we don't need, things like that. So we'll do a bit of cleanup here. First of all, we'll put down an attribute delete. And plug that in and just start removing the attributes that we know we're not going to, to need. So we don't need concavity, convexity. We don't need that PT dist anymore and we don't need our side. So those groups will be sort of nuked away. We definitely need normal and we definitely need UV. So we'll leave that primitive attributes while we're working with color. We don't need index class color ramp cracked. So all these attributes that we've been using to build this asset, we can get rid of detail attributes. We can leave those. That's fine. In fact, no, why not get rid of them? All right. Awesome. So that's cleaned up our geometry loads now. So if we bring up the information card again, you can see we've got very stripped down clean geometry with just the, the um, just the attributes that we need to get this rendered successfully. So let's just turn on our UVs display just to make sure everything's still there. Awesome. The next thing we need to do is the same with groups. So we could put down a group delete and then just tidy away all those groups that we don't need anymore. So that we definitely want our brick chip, brick face and grout. We don't need inside and we don't need outside. We also don't need these noise masks anymore. So again, that's tidied up our geometry a little bit. So let's just take a look, much cleaner. So we've only got those three primitive groups now that we can work with in our shading network to apply texture maps to the, to the faces there. Awesome. From here, I'm going to put down an output node and put the display flag on there. Brick, wall, output. All right, so with that, we can build our digital asset ready to be saved on disk. So the way we can do that is just select everything. Put it into a subnet using this little button here, create subnet. It's going to go away and think about things. And when that's done, we can give it a name, brick wall tool. All right, in fact, I'm gonna call mine brick wall tool build. Okay, as it's constantly, constantly um, recalculating, <laughs> that's, all, that's fine. So with that, now we're ready to create a digital asset with that. So the way that I like to do it is just right click, create digital asset, all right? And it's gonna ask for somewhere to save it, okay? So the default save to library here is pointing to your home directory on disk. So wherever you've got Houdini 19 installed, it creates a folder um, called OTL, which is the old fashioned operator library, something I can't remember, but it, it, that, it will store the digital asset as part of the Houdini um, digital asset library. So you'll have it in every single project that you do, which could be useful, you know, you might want to do that. However, what you might want to do is save it somewhere local to the project. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to click on here, I'm going to go over to my hip or my job or, or hip in this case. So this is the hip dollar hip is the variable where I've got this current Houdini scene saved. And here you can see I've got a folder called HDA. Okay, and there's the brick wall tool that I've built previously to this. So I'm just going to call this admin, uh, sorry, brick wall tool underscore build. So I've, I've, I'll keep that one separate. 
And then I'm going to hit accept. Give it a decent label, so brick wall tool build, and then an operator label is like the human readable version. So we'll go brick tool, and then I'll just call mine build as well. Okay, so with that, you can hit accept. And what it's going to do, it's going to bring up a very scary parameter window where all the um, where we can define the parameters for this um, brick wall tool. So minimum inputs zero that makes sense it doesn't require an input this digital asset however if you remember back when we introduced the tool it did have inputs available so the first one for was for a user driven curve which we're going to set up in an upcoming video and the second input was for some geometry to selectively remove the bricks so we can set maximum inputs to two just to give us those inputs so that the user can plug stuff into them so we'll leave that there Jump across to the parameters pane. This is where we're going to do uh, a bit of work to build that user interface for our digital asset. Okay, but the first parameter we want to get up and running is that build mode toggle. Um, so obviously we don't want to sit there waiting for Houdini to calculate all the chips and the UVs and things. We want to effectively bypass that into a quicker low polygon version for blocking out scenes or you know doing some scene layout. So the first parameter we're going to introduce is a toggle. So we're going to drag a toggle onto the root and we'll call this build mode toggle and we'll call it build mode all right so hit apply and accept and there we go we can see our build mode toggle here now it doesn't do anything at the moment because we've not hooked it up to anything so let's jump back inside our digital asset and let's think about how we want to uh, implement this so obviously this section here where we process the high polygon brick and add the damage to it we don't want to do that in build mode we want to bypass that entire section and sort of come down here straight to the output okay so let's just sort of identify a place sort of here i think would be a good place where we've added the brickwork uh, we've added the cracks and we've also removed some parts so let's just drop a null down here so we can branch off from this okay and then all the way at the bottom here i'm going to put down a switch node okay so if build mode is off the toggle will return a zero so zero would be the first index of this switch so we'll take that group delete plug that into the switch at input zero and then take our switch and plug that into the output if the toggles on it's going to return a one so what we want to do is take that all the way from there onto our switch now okay and we can link this parameter quite easily to the to the toggle that we've got so I'm just going to open up the parameter network uh, the parameter view again so I'm going to right click on my digital asset here and go all the way down to type properties all right and there we see our build mode toggle in the channels here I'm just going to grab this input to the switch and just drag that onto drop parameters hit apply and it's made that connection cool so let's just talk, let's just test that so on our brick wall digital asset there i'm going to right click again go to the parameters it'll bring up a floating window of parameters there so currently build mode is off and we're seeing the high polygon version so if we turn brick build mode on we get our low polygon version so that's our initial parameter for the um digital asset this little switch where we can switch between let's add some more very quickly before we um, progress so again right click on the digital asset type properties and here we are and the way that i like to build these uh, user interface layouts is as you can see we've been quite consistent in um, our color scheme so we've got a bit of a breadcrumb trail of the parameters we need to add what i'll do is i'll show you how to do a few and then I'll, uh, I'll leave you guys to build it because it's a very personal thing building these user interfaces and how you want to do them so I'll show you how I do it and then you can go ahead and um, finish it off yourself so the first one tackle it straight away line width 
what parameters do we need here? Well, we need this length parameter here. So I'm just going to cl click and drag into the root length, give it a decent name. So something like wall length, wall length. And then make sure our default value is set to something reasonable. Three meters seems fine. So I'll leave that default to be three. The next one we want is our line height. So again, just click and drag the name, drag it onto the root. Give it an A. Wall length. This is height, isn't it? Height. Wall height. Cool. Next is our brick rows. And if you remember, we were using the segments. And drag that. And then we'll call this brick rows we'll just call the name rows and again we'll make sure the default is something reasonable six is fine the um, range we can sort of maybe leave that unlocked for the height we don't ever want a wall of negative height so we'll lock that at say 10 centimeters and then for the height 10 meters seems reasonable so we'll kind of lock that one as well for the length Again, we don't want a wall of length zero, so perhaps we'll set that to be a meter wide. So uh, our smallest wall we can make is a meter wide. And then for the upper range of the length, well, it could be any length we need, so we'll leave that unlocked. Okay. So with those parameters built, I can select them all, right click, put parameters in new folder, and I'll call this base wall param parameters okay. and like I said building these user interfaces is, is, is great it's a lot of fun and you can sort of have your own style to doing it I like to use uh, simple folders just so everything is sort of arranged neatly in tabs and what I'd recommend you do is sort of work your way through the rest of um, the the node network here and anywhere that's got um, a yellow node just add it to your user interface and give it a reasonable name and a reasonable range of values as well. Don't forget you can lock these parameters um, should you wish. So, you know, if something doesn't make sense, you can't have sort of a negative sized or a negative integer number of things, for example. Um, yeah, set them up and configure them. Okay. And in the next video, what we'll do is we'll look at how we can set up a really, really simple shading network um, that takes advantage of those groups that we built. So hopefully, uh, I will see you there. Thank you very much.